Eatsy News, your place, your one-stop shop for what's been happening on Eatsy this week. And boy, there's a lot. Firstly, the quarter one financial results were out. And although I covered them in a live with Brian on Thursday, I just want to do some highlights of that and also some things that I forgot to mention because my mind's a mess. And also, is Eatsy charging you money for nothing? It was me. Whoops. <laughs> um, and actually there's tons more so let's dive straight into it firstly good thing gift mode updates gift mode is now available across the globe which i'm super happy with because it really annoys me kind of that etsy rolls out things and it will roll them out to america maybe or america the us canada europe and the uk but you know, look if you're doing that do it for everyone, in my opinion. Anyway, the other thing that is really good, I think, it's cute. Shoppers will be able to add a video message to their gift teaser so it feels even more special. There's an advert which is better than selling cheese to the gifting cheese to the French. It's a better advert, but it's given an idea that if you're stuck or something or you're not going to be able to see the person, what you're going to be able to do, a customer is going to be able to do, is purchase something on Etsy as a gift. Then they have the option to leave a gift message, which has been around for a little while. So it's going to say an Etsy gift is on its way. Um, you can even show what the item is and everything. But they're also going to be able to leave a video message. So, hey, happy birthday. I um, hope you love this. Here's the thing that's on the way. And I believe you're going to be able to. It doesn't have to be the customer. It's not it's not a seller thing. We get nothing to do with this, but the customer is going to be able to either send it immediately or they're going to be able to schedule it to be able to send to their friend on their birthday or whatever. So I think that is actually pretty good. We'll see how it goes. There's a Google update I heard about and I want to share this. Um, it's not really Etsy, but people are talking about it and they're kind of reading it a little wrong as far as I can see. Google did an update to weed out AI content, right? Okay. Yes and no. Um, people seem to think that if you get ChatGPT to do something, if you get Chatty to do something for you and you put it on your website, Google is going to know that that was AI generated because there's some kind of metadata put in there. That is not the case. Um, but... Google can tell because, and they used the words that Etsy used, so it's interesting, but they're looking at low quality blog posts, low quality websites. And I totally understand this. So it's not that they can tell that the AI has written it because of some kind of metadata. They can tell because the quality of the text is bad. Let me explain. Last year, I was looking for for some hiking trails around Scotland. I was visiting places that I hadn't been before. I wanted to find some hiking trails. And on the first page of the search results for all of this, they were AI generated websites. They were AI generated posts. And I could tell very clearly from one very simple thing. It would start off okay. It would talk about the area, what's great in it, maybe even where to park and the useful things. But as you read down into the body of the text, it was talking about things that were irrelevant. I'm in Scotland. It was talking about what to do if I see a bear. We don't have bears here. And that the problem with that is AI tries, has the knowledge of the internet there. And it's not even AI. We talk about it as AI. It's a large language model. What it is, is it sees how people write things and it tries to predict how someone would write something from all the average of what it's getting in there. So the average hiking trail websites that you see are probably in countries that have more wildlife than Scotland. So it's going to warn you about more wildlife that doesn't exist. So basically it's low quality content because it's not researched, it's not correct. But the people making it, they're trying to churn out blogs and websites and things loads and loads quickly because there is this thing going around that everyone seems to think you need lots of lots of content. Whatever you're doing, you need lots of content. But no, Google's done an update. It wants quality content. So 
I think this is a good thing. And but even Etsy has used AI, they told us. They told us they used AI to sort out their gift personas in the gifting mode. We can use AI, but use it as your slightly dumb assistant that you've always got to check up on. Use it for bouncing ideas back and forwards, but write the stuff yourself. Don't just copy and paste what they say, not because there's metadata, but because it's generally wrong. It hallucinates, it says wrong things. You're going to have to do your research. Anyway, right. Um, Eatsy shares. Look, there's no sugar coat in this one. Yes, Eatsy shares did take a dip. They went down from $70 to $60. So that is a significant dip um, after the quarter one financial report. And it's no surprise. Eatsy were very honest with this, very honest in a way of saying, yeah, things are bad just now. But for me, it felt very positive, but it's not going to be for shareholders who are short term. Although I'm seeing people are posting up going basically, whoa, share prices dipped, I'm buying. <laughs> so there are, I think like me, I haven't bought any shares yet, thinking about it actually, but there are people like me who feel that when the people are being honest, when Etsy is being honest and saying things are bad, we notice, we really see what's gone wrong. It gives me hope that they can actually fix it. And if you've watched me for any length of time, I'm usually, I've been very salty for this past year. So I'm feeling better about this. So the share price is dip. Fair enough. I don't care that investors get hurt. I want Etsy sellers, good Etsy sellers to do well. Um, yeah. And by the way, I am not offering any share advice here. I'm not an expert. I'm not telling you to go and buy shares or anything. Goodness, no. Um, I'm just saying the share prices are low, but I don't think it's uh, the sky is falling on Etsy. I think it's we expected this. And I think this should be a rip the band-aid off moment. This this should be a short-term pain for hopefully longer-term good stuff. And if the quick bucks investors jump out just now, fair enough. Bye-bye. <laughs> we as sellers want the long-term future of Etsy to be good. We want it to be a decent platform. And to do that, it's going to have to struggle a little bit. Canadians, hopefully good news for you. If you're using Etsy labels, they should be getting a bit cheaper. That's all I've got to say on that, really. Um, okay, yeah, here, here's the one. You're probably going to watch this and think I'm an absolute dummy. I feel like an absolute dummy, but check your inactive listings. Now, I knew if you were on vacation mode and you had listings set to renew, set to expire and they were on auto renew, they would renew when you were on vacation mode. So if you were on vacation mode for five or six months, all your listings would renew while never having been seen. Annoying. I think I knew in the back of my mind that it happened for inactive listings as well. They're the same as being on vacation but I didn't realize. But now, I don't know if other people have many inactive listings. Because I'm basically testing things, I'll sometimes put things to inactive rather than delete them. So I have, I have 32 inactive listings, and I only just thought to check the other day. And yes, they're set to auto-renew. They're constantly auto-renewing even when they're not, they've not been active for years, probably. So yeah, here's a, here's a, I'm a dummy. You want to check this out just in case you've made the mistake too, but, or just feel free to laugh at me. Um, Etsy payments are now in India. I know people are like, they went mental over the Chinese thing, even more so with India. It's not, oh no, India's coming to Etsy. India's been in Etsy a couple of years ago. Etsy were talking about India as a good place to focus on growth because there's a lot of people in India. Um, so Etsy is in India. We have Indian sellers and we have Indian buyers, but Etsy payments weren't in India. So they were having to use what's this Razor Pay and PayPal. Um, so now Etsy payments have rolled out. This can be good in that it's going to help you with things like the purchase protection program. It's 
more good for Etsy. I mean, PayPal works fine, but if it's if you use Etsy payments, then Etsy get the payment conversion money instead of PayPal. But still, it yeah, it's good that everyone is on the same playing field. You know, rolling out Etsy payments to everybody. Fair enough. Okay, now we're getting into the quarter one results. That some things I just want to reiterate for those that missed them, and some things I missed talking about. So, firstly, the customer loyalty. This was mentioned in the last report and in this report. We don't know much about it, but it is to turn um, Etsy buyers, you know, occasional buyers, into more more avid fans with a customer loyalty program and it is going to be released in the beta mode in quarter three this year and we're going to have a growth page added to Etsy. Etsy wants to add more tools to help buyers become more skilled. It wants more skilled buyers and it wants sellers and it wants less of the sellers who come in, post a thousand listings and that is a, a design they've bought from Creative Fabrica, they've stuck on a t-shirt, they've bought a mock-up from someone else and they've spent like two minutes per shirt or something. They want to help the people who are spending the time to learn how to use Etsy. Now there's going to be this growth page which is going to checklist. We've seen these kind of things all over the place. I don't see mine yet, but practical tips, personalized insights, and expert advice to level up your business. And in the screenshot they showed, it was build trust with buyers, stand out in search, and promote your shop, and a checklist for each of them. I will say with any of these things with Etsy, it's good that they're doing them, but the advice in here is just going to be suggestions. Basically, they have the data of all shops on Etsy, so they know what works on average. So they're giving you some ideas of what might work on average, but it doesn't necessarily everything work for every individual shop. So always beware when these kind of suggestions come out. Don't do everything. Do the things that work for your shop. I mean, I bet being cynical, because you need a little bit of salty palm here, like the promote your shop. I bet they're going to be saying use ads and spend lots of money on them because yes, people who are spending lots of money on ads are in the long term, you know, if someone's spending hundreds of dollars a day on ads for years and years and years, they're likely to be shops that are making lots of money. Are they making lots of money because they're using the ads? Mm, probably not. Who knows? Um, but, you know, on average, Etsy could say, yes, absolutely, the people that are spending this money are making loads of money. Well, yeah, because if they were spending loads and they weren't making loads of money, they'd go bankrupt. So that's doing a rant about how stats can lie to you in the favour of Etsy. Do the things that work for you, your business and your shop. But they are wanting to give more training to help us all, which is a good thing. Just, yeah. You know, Seller beware. Um, I want to do some highlights of the financial report in case you missed them. So listings duplicated on Alibaba will be automatically shut down. I don't know if it's other sites as well. They specifically mentioned Alibaba, AliExpress, whatever these things are. Josh did say that he knows that some people's Etsy listings are copied on Alibaba. Your listing will automatically be taken down. However, you have to appeal it. You have to say, hang on, that's mine. Um, the vast majority are the other way around. People are trying to drop ship from Alibaba. They're seeing things that sell there. They're doing a big markup, copying the listing. So Etsy wants rid of those. Customers want to know how handmade. This is super interesting. Basically, when someone say buying a t-shirt, they'd like to know, did the seller screen print this, tie dye it by hand in their own kitchen, or is it sent to a print on demand company? He said there is place for all of these kind of things, but 
they're wanting to highlight, they're wanting to help customers with this. So this is interesting to what Etsy is going to do about this. I think it's hopefully good for everybody because if you sell print on demand things, you want customers who want to buy print on demand things. It's not a bad thing. Plenty of people are happy buying it. If you sell handmade, you would like an option to build it. No, every it's all handmade or vintage or supplies but if you sell things that you are making yourself the quality is different but also the speed you can churn them out is different so you need to be featured differently different people want it i'm saying different a lot but you get the point um there's also plans to suppress the low quality listings and he did mention what's considered low quality is things like bad photographs now they've been training the ai what is good photographs by a lot of humans picking etsy picks so if your items have been featured as an etsy pick then they've been used to train the ai to say this is the kind of things we're looking for so you're kind of doing good if they haven't it doesn't mean that your items aren't good it just means Etsy staff can't find every single listing in the millions and millions but if yours are of a good a good enough quality the AI will be able to see that um it also said items that ship late very important because shipping late has never been factored into search yet it could be a thing that causes you to get bad reviews but yes shipping late was mentioned and bad reviews obviously and also things that need refunded a lot now the Etsy purchase protection program is promising it'll arrive on time or your money back it will do this or your money back and they're refunding buyers and so if your items are constantly being refunded Etsy might suppress them a little bit now here's one that I missed in the quarterly report live because i heard it in the quarterly report and my ears pricked up and then i forgot to talk about it but josh said he wants to make etsy a destination for people to be entertained so they come to etsy not as shoppers and my thinking how my ears pricked up there was i was thinking etsy explore this video feature that they've rolled out only to apple users in the us but making crafty videos basically crafty tiktok and that's where my ears picked up pricked up like get a move on we're rolling this out to the rest of us and for all of us we should really be thinking of making entertaining style videos around our craft if that is something he mentioned that we want to make he wants to make Etsy a destination where people come to be entertained TikTok people sit watching videos and they've started shopping on TikTok so why not reverse engineer that for Etsy people come to watch crafty videos on Etsy and end up buying I, I can see it yes um, quarter three and quarter four are to be bold projects. This is good and worrying all at the same time. But basically he's saying, well, we know there's going to be the loyalty program, but he's saying they want to release big projects like the gift mode rather than little polishing turd type projects. My words, not, not his. He, he wasn't that honest. Um, so we've got to look out for some big things coming. Um, it does worry me a little bit. Um, I really wish the culture of move fast and break stuff didn't exist. It's not good anyway. And Etsy wants to focus on diversity on the front page. This is not people diversity. This is listing diversity. He mentioned, as we've been saying for a while, when people search for something, the front page is full of similar things in a lot of categories and he's wanting that not to be the case now they mentioned this in last quarter too almost talking about if there's many duplicates now firstly if they're duplicated on alibaba out of here but if there's many duplicates collapsing them down so you only see the one so they've been thinking about this for a good few months now so they've maybe got something in place to be launched coming up but 
Yeah, it did make me think of all the people who come on Etsy and try and just copy the person who's selling the best, look for the best sellers and just copy them. Yeah, maybe, hopefully, what Etsy's going to be doing is, right, that was the first listing there. This is this is the one that's going to show up in search. All the duplicates will sort of be collapsed down underneath. So you might go into a listing and have to click on see more if you wanted to see more options. But the first person is the only one to be seen in search. I certainly hope so. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and I thought we'd dive in with my graphs. Finally, Etsy did acknowledge that the ratio of buyers to sellers is bad and the graphs really show it. But first of all, this is GMS per seller, gross merchandise sales per seller. It's how much, how much buyers are spending on Etsy. And if we divide it up by the number of sellers, more is better here we can see that quarter one 2024 had the lowest ratio since quarter three 2015 basically nearly in a decade and quarter two 2020 that number was up at nearly 900 dollars. i know whenever i tell people the number they're shocked at how low it is on average per quarter well for quarter two 2020 on average each seller was making just under $900 and now it's down to just over $300 $300 per quarter just over $1000 a year for your Etsy shop interesting now what what constitutes a seller what constitutes a buyer yeah 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 we we don't know the exact numbers but or what they mean by them but the comparative are things worse than they have ever been well since since we've got the data yep they're pretty bad and the buyers to sellers ratio this is how many how many buyers you've got for every seller the peak of that was around about 19 in during the pandemic and now we're down at around about 11 and it is the lowest it has been in a decade. So there are too many sellers. Etsy knows there are too many sellers. Etsy doesn't care about taking down listings or shutting down sellers that they don't like the look of. So be careful. Don't, you can't go by, oh, this is totally, this is there's millions of this on Etsy. Other people do it, so it must be right. Check the policies, make sure. Um, yeah, one thing that I totally missed mentioning, bear in mind the Etsy policy, if you sell print on demand, people are giving out advice just now that it's okay to use mock-ups of your listing. The Etsy policy for listing photos clearly say if you use a production partner, which is what print on demand is, your listing photos must either be of your item, your finished item that you've taken the picture of, or the mock-up from the production partner. Those are the exact words. Now, other people might have different ideas about it, but I can only tell you the exact words that Etsy say. And Etsy also said they've taken down in this last quarter more than double the number of listings that they've ever taken down before. So they are stamping down on things. So be extra, extra careful you can only really take the advice that Etsy gives you. Nobody else has inside information. So I'm not telling you what to do, but be careful. And by the way, people have said, if you're a, a digital mock-ups shop, this doesn't mean Etsy's putting you out of business. People who sell digital things and want mock-ups to show what their items would look like if people printed it out themselves or who sell personalized things that's totally allowed to use to like mock-ups and also people can use mock-ups can use them on other sites it's totally allowable on other sites so it's not trying to put digital mock um mock-up sellers out of out of business um yeah <laughs> and also 
if you if you're doing this, Etsy isn't the only place to sell your items. If this is totally your business model is selling this print on demand stuff and you've followed what other people are saying about how to make you know just bunging a design on a shirt and making up hundreds of shirts a day or listings a day there's other places you can do that as well i think at the minute in time etsy is trying to move back to looking more handmade and vintage and supplies but uh, making their handmade stuff more hands-on doesn't mean print on demand doesn't exist but the very very low effort is potentially very very low value um so there are not every item is correct to be sold on etc that's that's all i'm saying but guys let me know about all of this in the chat i feel actually more positive about Etsy just now. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know how salty I've been. Um, but fingers crossed, I, things are going to be difficult. It's it's going to be tough before it gets better. But hopefully Etsy's working in a way that everyone has a place. We're not all drowned out by the people who can produce masses of things. It's more of a level playing field, I hope. Let me know in the comments below.